Tyrese Halliburton, I would say for the first half of last season, looked like a top five MVP candidate. Just truly, right? He was entirely dominant. The That's way that awesome. he was running the show, taking them to the final of the in-season tournament, and then he hurt his hamstring, if I remember correctly. Yep. And things slowed down, and then it felt like because of the real financial ramifications involving making all NBA, it felt like he came back a little bit early from that hamstring in order to hit the games played number in order to kind of hit that uh, extra. What is it like $40 million that he gets? Can I get by making all quick, Sam 33 games first 33 games of the season, 23.6 points, 33 minutes a game, 50% from the field, 40% 40% from three on over eight attempts, 87% from the line on four attempts, 4.2 rebounds, 12.5 assists to 2.5 turnovers. I'll repeat that. 12.5 assists to 2.5 turnovers. It's a pretty good yeah, start he, to the season. Obscene to start the season. He was unconsciously good to start the season and on top of it was carrying what was the number one offense in the league continued to carry like an unbelievable offense, even while he was um, maybe not at his best, but over the course of the full season, he averaged 20 points, four rebounds, 11 assists. (laughs) It's not bad. (laughs) Ridiculous. He was shooting. The big thing that changed for him over that time, in my opinion, at least was it felt like the hamstring injury kind of took away his shooting gravity Yeah, to me. Felt like he didn't quite have the legs and the juice to be able to consistently knock down that pull-up jumper. Halliburton, over the early course of his career, honestly has been like closer to Stephen Curry from three than what like I think a lot of people recognize. Uh, in terms of volume, like he drilled 40% from three on 7.2 three point attempts per game uh, in the entirety of last season, 2022, 23. And then the year before, or the year coming into this year, so the first half of his season, what did he shoot from three 40. in those 31 games? 41, 42. I don't know. I don't have it anymore, but yeah, 41, 42% from three. And he was he does it on a significant number of pull ups is the yeah, thing, sure. and he does it from thirty foot range consistently because he has the low release point that's like a little bit funky, so he has to shoot from way far out. So when I watch Halliburton, he has that ability to stretch the defense with his own shot. He loves to take those early ball screens, and he's going to make the right read every single time. He is one of the best drivers of efficient offense that you will find in the entire NBA. And that is what makes him as valuable as he is across the league. So after he came back from hamstring, he was down in the low thirties from three on less volume. And I think another number that stood out was how many less free throw attempts. So I just don't think, yes. you know, he's, he's not a super athletic guy. We all know this. And then if you're dealing with a hamstring, that first step explosion and all of that is taken down even a little bit more. And that's really going to bother a guy like him, especially if he doesn't have the same amount of shooting gravity. So I think what this comes down to is, do you believe what we saw the second half of the season and the playoffs, which, you know, you look at his playoffs numbers, he still averaged 19 on 49, 38, 85 with 8.2 assists. It's not like those are awful numbers, but probably not numbers to warrant quite how high we have him on the list. So do you believe in what he was to start the, the season last year? Or do you think that was just a hot start? It wasn't the injury that caused kind of the slow end. I lend and lean, excuse me, to the injury was really bothering him. I think the injury, especially immediately when he came back for that first month, was really bothering him. And I think it took him a while to get back into rhythm. And then after he got back into rhythm, they acquired Siakam. And I think that there was some feeling out there was a feeling out process basically where he was trying to figure out exactly how to play with Siakam and by the way they figured it out because they went to the conference finals yeah right yeah uh and look like they got a little bit lucky like they ran into a team in the New York Knicks that got incredibly injured right and they you know lost or I think they won like three of those final four games in that series while they were dealing with all of those injuries so With Halliburton, I do see a world 
where he is able to kind of take a big leap next year, even from what the overall full season numbers were this year. And he's at like 23 points a game and 12 assists and, you know, two turnovers per game. And he continues to be like the best driver of what might be the best offense in the league. The thing we haven't talked about yet with Halliburton is the defense. Yeah. Right. He He's a genuinely really bad defender right now in the league. Yep. And people got really excited when he was coming in about the assistant turn or the uh, steal and block numbers at Iowa state at the end of the day, he just has never really been able to guard on the ball. And he's a little bit too skinny to guard non ones. He consistently gets hit. I would say pretty effectively by wings and by bigger players that are able to find different mismatches on him. Yeah. No, nah, he, this is a real area of concern. And that's where, you know, I talked about with J dub, I, I can see people who go like, Hey, you have a real two way wing that is a nightmare on defense. And then also able to do whatever percentage of what Hallie does on offense. And so I get that. I, I just wonder if it's going to get better. Like if he doesn't physically improve his body, it, what do you think the biggest holdup, Sam? Is it, is it that? Is it just he's not strong enough? Is there more intensity and energy that needs to be expended for him? Do you think if he did that, it would get better? Or is this just kind of who he is? I mean, we're not, what, five years into his career, so this isn't the end-all, be-all, but four years into his career, I guess. Is, is this going to be it? I like to think that if he continues to get like bigger and stronger – it will allow him to be able to take a jump on defense. But I worry that the frame just kind of is what it is. And I also worry a little bit about like, will he continue to get these like little soft tissue injuries if he adds more and more weight? Because look, he played 56 games last season. He played what, 66 games this year? Uh, missed the final two games of their playoff series against Boston, right? So I, I do have my concerns that the defense isn't going to like take a big, big leap necessarily, but I mean, he's such a smart player that like, you like to think that the team defense is going to be okay, uh, longer term, but it, it, he's a, he's kind of a magnet is the problem. He's kind of an on ball magnet right yeah. now for teams to kind of attack. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Like that's, that's, that was my hold up with him and, that's why, I mean, I knew he was going to be in this tier. I feel like he's, you know, an all NBA level player over these next five years. And, and this is kind of the tier I'm in of guys who I think are going to make all NBA is how I categorize this tier of guys we're talking about, at least to start off this episode. But what keeps him from being higher than others or real debates against him and Maxi or him and J-Dub or whatever is just that those concerns on the defensive end. Yeah, I, I would uh, look. I had Williams ahead of him for sure. Yeah, I think that's uh, fair. on my list, and it was largely the defense. But again, Halliburton was just the best player on a team that went to the Eastern Conference Finals, and that is also worth saying something. So, like, they worked around it at a high level, and he was unbelievable, and is on the Olympic team now, and is now a gold medalist. Like, I think that we probably underrate Halliburton a little bit based off of the close to the season when he wasn't hundred percent healthy necessarily. Uh, yeah. H Halliburton is like an unbelievable driver of offense in the and, NBA. And, and that's where I got to when I was in this tier of, okay, if I think this guy's going to make all NBA, a guy who is the guy on that team, I know Pascal's there now, but kind of the face of that team, it's a good team. I think they're going to continue to win games. They have a style yeah. that fits him, all of that. It's just hard for me not to bet on that guy being in the in the running for this stuff over the next five years. Like he's just in a situation that makes a lot of sense for that to be true. Yeah, that's fair.